where are all the top players in the Hispanic community? Where are they? Why aren't they just completely taking over the NCAA and taking over the professional game and the national teams in America? Why aren't they just taking it all over? You see glimpses of it, but it should it should be a hostile takeover if you see what I see. And this is just my opinion, and I'm going to give it to you right now um, because it needs to be said. Under the age of 10, I'm talking uh, three-year-olds, the best three-year-olds in Arizona are Hispanic. They can juggle the ball. They get, they can do amazing things. I'm look at this. This is a little bear team. So I have a, a little bears academy. Uh, they play for their individual clubs. They're actually this is a Falcons uh, soccer club. Uh, this guy right here. This kid's name's Geo. Uh, this picture was taken. I think he was five at the time. Uh, he when I first saw him, uh, it was before this uh, picture. It was obviously he was I think four because uh, we've been doing the Bears Academy for like two or three years. And he could juggle at the age of four. He could do a rainbow with the ball. Like, it, he just, not normal. And for someone that's born and raised in Phoenix, Arizona, I, I've i always prided myself to engage the Hispanic community um, because they have something I wish I had, which is the culture of soccer, meaning the, the game was on, at home, your brothers and sisters played it with you in the house and broke 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 things from playing, and you did pick up games in the street. I mean, uh, you watched the Champions League, and uh, it was a big deal, like the World Cup final. It, that kind of environment. I wish I had that. So that exists here, and these kids are amazing. I mean, they are competing and playing at an early age. They get more game time. More competition, more real competition, more trophies won by the age of 10 than 99% of everybody else playing soccer. That's just what it is. So it's very simple. They watch the game. They play more real games and pick up, and uh, it's a celebration. I had a 6v6 league um, at my college uh, for as a fundraiser, and uh, it just packed. It was just packed, and it's all Hispanic. C- occasional white team here and there, but they ended up, you know, they got frustrated because the games always started late, and, you know, they're, we weren't as organized as we'd like to be, but, you know, Hispanic, it didn't bother Hispanics. They were like, we're, we're around soccer. We're cool. This one time I come, uh, and, you know, we have a um, – you know, a gate fee and stuff. We're just trying to control the numbers because a lot of people would come. There was a birthday party. I'm like, what the? And I go to the birthday party and I'm like, what What are you doing here? I'm, they're like, oh, we're sorry. You know, uh, we don't want to miss our son's um, uh, soccer game. So instead of having the party at home, we, we decided to have it here. So even for birthday parties where they were like, oh, uh, you know, in, in uh, the white community, Sorry, we 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 can't play it uh, tonight because it's our uh, son's birthday and we rented out Peter Park Pizza or whatever. Um, it's just different. There's nothing wrong with missing sports for to celebrate your birthday and stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. That's good. Be with family, you know, and friends. But it's like missing church. You know, they they don't you don't you don't miss. You want to be an active church member. You want to be around God as much as you can. And that's how the game is for the Hispanic community. So it, it's just different. There's a couple things that I've recently came up with or realized, and I may, might be wrong, but I think I might be right, is there, there's two things that I can think of right now that is destroying the development of the Hispanic uh, player. Two things. That, uh, that doesn't allow them to take over the NCAA, all levels, and uh, professional and the national team. There's two things. One is the style of play is being corrupted by sideline abuse. And I know this because my son plays for Tuzos, and he's one of the few white kids in the club. And um, the parents get a little nutty there 
because they want to win so bad. They're no different than anyone else. Just their kids just tend to be very technical, but they're denying their kids the ability to be technical. And then the coaches are in, inserting tactical plans to win again. They're up by one, you know, keep the ball out wide and kind of kill the clock and stuff like that versus just keep the ball. Just keep the ball. Just be you. It's a celebration. You can keep the ball forever. And you'll see glimpses of it. The, uh, the Hispanic teams, you'll see glimpses. I mean, they're, they're, I seen them at, at four or five. I, uh, Food City Tournament, it's huge. It's always sold out. And you'll see the segment of these fields that are like um, nine on nine, and they're all like four and five year olds wearing these uniforms that do not fit, and it's the cutest thing ever. Uh, it's they have been around the game so much, and they are actually combining at times. They're combining passes that are just ridiculous, and then it kind of goes away because of the sideline abuse of telling them what to do and screaming at these poor kids, robbing uh, robbing them of their development because they could get better if they're left alone and they really focus on every individual opportunity on the ball, because it's a simple math game, in my opinion, whoever gets the most opportunities on the ball in a real game and has a ton of failure followed by a ton of success and keeps improving on those numbers, they're going to have a huge advantage. um, That just that you'll never catch up with. So that is a big problem. The second thing is loyalty. And I say loyalty because the top teams in these Hispanic um, clubs get bought. Now, when I say top, uh, the 06 Tuzos, three or four years ago, they were, I can't think, two, maybe it was, Two years ago, I know no, no one knows time in this COVID period. By the way, um, a couple of years ago, they um, they were the top team in the country. They got invited to play in uh, a, a a tournament um, in Florida, and it's a it's a Prospects Cup. It's huge, and I really didn't know what it was. And I remember the coach at the time telling me, you know, they're we're in the Pro- Prospect Cup. I'm like, who cares? I don't even know what that means. And they're playing teams like. Uh, it's uh, the top U12 uh, teams in the world were there. So they had Man City, uh, I think Barcelona. Um, uh, they had uh, some academies uh, teams like LA, Ga- uh, LA Galaxy's Academy. They had um, Texas, um, their academy, um, and then Tuzos. So I'm watching Tuzos play some team from Spain, I think, and – on Facebook Live, it had like 132,000 people watching live. I'm like, what the heck is this? So apparently it's the same tournament that um, uh, Ibrahimovic played in when he was 12, and it just had all these top players that played there because they are part of some academy throughout the world, and that's where they met in Florida to play the Prospects Cup. So, And they, they, they did well. They didn't get blown out they competed I think they lost uh, lost a game won a game tied a game and I was just shocked like what the heck is this and I knew a lot of those kids because they were in my club um, playing with my son Jack uh, when they're like you six and it just and those kids are still unbelievable to to this day I mean they're just technical and they can deal with it so they're the best team in Arizona by far um uh, top team in the country, uh, all Hispanic. And uh, it was just something to see. So, of course, the rich club um, comes in and buys them. So they bought the team and they left. And then over there, the team, a you know, couple reasons, I'm sure, with the age rule change and stuff, but they, they basically inserted the Del Sol kids. And then they started losing, and then the team, you know, the team got a little goofy and and just kind of disappeared. It destroyed it, all because this club wanted to own the rights to that team. They wanted the credit of we have the best team in the country, kind of mentality. So that that happens a lot. If you win, you'll have all these clubs 
trying to get you. And what they do is they pay the coach. Hey, we'll give you a job here. Because of the the uh, uh, majority of the coaches in uh, Hispanic clubs don't, don't don't get paid. You know, they maybe a little bit, but it's not like a job. Like it's just something you do. And uh, that's a problem. So the loyalty is a big deal. So there is, because of the loyalty issue and the integration from that, mixing it up. I mean, you do not want to play with non-technical players. I don't care how athletic they are and all that, what attributes they may have. If they don't fit your system, the Hispanic culture, playing the way they watch on TV, the foot-to-foot kind of beautiful soccer, it's not going to help the uh, the Hispanic kids. So that doesn't help them. So, I mean, at Phoenix College where I work, my whole team is, I'm on year 17 or 18 or whatever. I don't know how long I've been there, but it seems like forever. And my team's all Hispanic. It hasn't always been that way, but over time it's become very Hispanic. And I realized uh, that the Hispanic players were the top players I could get. They were not getting picked up for Division One for whatever reason, and I would get them so I could showcase them and give them that opportunity. And what I noticed was uh, we would always do well. We always played beautiful soccer, and I would insert myself in horrible ways, like with tactics, because I was so concerned with winning, I would... L- I would put things in their head to take away the game from them, which was um, we would we create uh, stats on them. Like every time they had the ball, if they pass the ball forward, they got a plus two. If they pass the ball backwards, it was zero. Um, if they gave it away, it was minus two, uh, you know, and minus four for giving the ball going backwards. And just those things to manipulate them to play how I wanted them to play. Stealing their thought because that's how I was taught. You go through the, the U.S. soccer way of teaching. They give you a curriculum of how to play tactics and all these systems of play and make it about me when it should be about them. And I didn't really realize this until me as a player, and I'm very technical, by the way. I learned my tech, technique late. I love playing. Love it. But I will not ever play in a league or a pickup game with players on my team that are not technical. Can't do it. I love to combine. That's fun to me. Running stupidly, working my butt off to um, play the game. No, it's not going to happen. Ever. Having said that, I kind of realized, I'm like, what have I done? I'm like, I'm giving the game back to, to them. And I have talent, and I've robbed these kids. So I have a huge advantage over everybody else. So we had a game against a, a NCAA Division One team, a very, very good team. And it, we're just a junior college team. But everyone knows we have players, and, you know, it's, uh, you know some NCAA teams want to play us because they want to recruit some of the players because they'll fit into what they need to do to win. And I kept telling my players, in almost in an uh, apologetic way, I'm giving you the game back. And I don't think they believe me. And still to this day, I don't think they believe me because we're in this COVID freaking lockdown. Anyways, the advantage we have, I have over the team we're going to play is my guys are playing all the time. 6v6 league, indoor league, 11 me 11 league, and, and like they're playing all the flipping time. And before the game, you know, the you know, NCAA team, you know, they you know, they get their protein shakes and all this stuff and they get the proper rest and they have the heart rate monitors and all all the things that make them feel good about their development, which is all mental for them. We, you know, my guys are playing and I'm trying to tell them, hey guys, we have Big game on Saturday. Yeah, and, and they're playing like Friday night league. Some played Saturday morning before the game at night. I'm like, what is wrong with them? They, they just love it. Not saying what they did is right, but 
It's in their – they have more game time than all the opposition we're playing. I mean, they have thousands upon thousands of hours of real games – in whether it's 6v6, 4v4, indoor, uh, 11v11, outdoor tournament, they have more than everybody else because they jump on everything. They're not hindered by U.S. soccer rules of you're going to play in this team only. They'll break those rules. It's different. They have to play. It's different. I had a huge advantage, and I knew it. We go in that game. We're supposed to get destroyed. Uh, we go up 2-0. We kept the ball beautifully. I mean, the game went back and forth. Obviously, they're good. But we were different. Before, we would, uh, you know, play university teams. We would, like, have to pack it in and counter and do, do systems or whatever. Uh, now, I just, my pregame to my guys was be Hispanic. Keep the ball. That's number one. It's your ball. You keep it. Why? We have the advantage. They've been in pressure situations their entire life not realizing it because that's just what they do. So I tell you this. Um, I tell you this because there's a way to really um, change the game in, in the United States and it's all about showcasing the Hispanic players. I can do this because I can find them. I know who they are. I know who they are at nine. And if something happens, like they convert to an all-white team and they stop showcasing their abilities, we, we will show it for them when they get to uh, Phoenix College. Uh, there is a problem, though, and, and it can be fixed. And I'm telling you, all you, co- all you coaches that are coaching Hispanic teams, all you parents that are on the sidelines for Hispanic teams, demand that you play the game according to your heroes on TV. you got to play like them right now. What are you waiting for? Play like that all the time. I know you've seen it. I know you've seen glimpses. But it's more important that you do not defy your your love of the game. They play like those who they watch on TV. You gotta keep the ball. You gotta love the ball in possession and allow them to be creative. And coaches, change your name to manager. Parents, change change your, your thought process on data. Write down every time your kid uh, makes a decision with the ball in a game and compare those stats and keep telling them to beat their scores. How many times has your son or daughter uh, took the ball from the opposition, whether whether it was uh, uh, intercepting a pass or taking the ball off the dribble? When have they done that? Recognize that. Talk to your kids about that. And then they'll work harder defensively. Talk to them how many times they pass the ball forward, how many times they pass the ball backwards, and reward them for that through conversation of love. That's what you need to do. So those are my thoughts today. I'm going to be talking about this topic a lot. And it'll change over time. I'm not sure if I'm right about any of this, but I'm not, I'm not wrong. I'm probably kind of wrong. But it's a conversation we need to have. So please reach out to me. You can email me at coachcameronpodcast at gmail.com. If you have thoughts on this, uh, this is something worth exploring. And I'm very excited for COVID to be over with so I can prove it. Because Phoenix College, we have the top Hispanics. Overall, we, we have the most, we have most of them. So therefore, we can play and I can just sit and watch. See you guys next time.